Hey folks, it's me, your friendly neighborhood cyborg. A little more cyborged out than before. Um, I thought I'd give you all a quick little update on this beauty right here. This is the Oticon uh, Ponto Plus Power um, bone anchored hearing aid. And I did an initial video after the surgery where they put in the implant. Now, apparently all the osseo integration has gone well. And I've gotten this puppy programmed and uh, I can I can now hear out of my right ear, which is quite splendid. And I wanted to um, give you all an update on some of the things I'm experiencing and some of the things that you can expect and uh, what you can expect if you are able to um, acquire one of these guys. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and pop this off. It comes off. It's not permanently attached to me. What is permanently attached to me is the implant. And I showed the implant. I've showed it in a couple other videos. Um, but the implant is consists of two spots. And I can't actually see the screen right now, so hopefully you can see what it is. Um, there's a part that's screwed into my skull and uh, that kind of sits flush with the bone of the skull and that's what we had to wait for to get osseo integrated for the bone to kind of grow around it a little bit um, and then screwed into that is what's called an abutment the abutment is what you actually see and the skin sort of seals up around the edge of the abutment um, this is uh, this magical little device actually attaches to the abutment um, and we'll vibrate that abutment with a little transducer on the bottom here um, that'll allow me to, to hear sound. Um, and what's cool about this is that if the abutment needs to be changed out for any reason, there's a, it's tightened down with like a, a high torque a torque screw. You can unscrew it, change out the abutment. If uh, if for some reason you know I have rather thick, uh, you know, thick skin and stuff around my skull, if that gets a little bit too thick, I can actually get a taller abutment um, to put the uh, put the hearing aid a little further off my head. Or if it's it's touching the skin a lot around the around the edge and causing feedback, um, I can get a taller abutment for that. Or you can get a smaller abutment to um, to get a little bit closer to your head, depending on what you what you need to get. And depending on your age, if you're a kid, you're gonna get a little bit smaller one. If you're, a, you know, if you have a, a giant a head like mine and you're an adult, you might wanna get a taller one. Um, I think they go all the way up to 14 millimeters, if I remember correctly, which is, um, which is tall enough for even the most thick skinned a large scold individual like myself. Um, and that's the actual little um, electronic part of it, um, the Ponto Plus Power. There are actually three different uh, levels of Ponto that you can get. Um, there's the, the Ponto, the, the regular, and actually this is the second um, generation of Ponto. And the third generation just came out. So I might be able to swap this one in for the new one that just came out. The Ponto 3 is what they're calling that one. The Ponto Plus is the second one. So that's what this is. Um, there's the regular Ponto Plus, which will have a little bit narrower bottom in here with, I think, uh, maybe just one mic array. This one actually has two. And I don't know if you can see, but there's two little, mm, probably can't see too well. There's two uh, very small microphones. Uh, you can see that just two little holes there. The the power has a little bit more um, power, obviously. It can get a little bit louder. And then there's even um, uh, one tier above that, and I don't remember the name of that model, that will uh, has a hybrid system that will give you sound through your ear canal and through your skull um, for people who have a particularly significant um, type of hearing loss. Uh, now, my, my hearing loss in my right ear is extremely significant, um, but it's conductive hearing loss, and this bypasses that by vibrating the skull, so I don't have to worry about any of those middle ear bones um, having to uh, be repaired in order for me to hear sound out of my right ear. I haven't actually heard out of this ear in about 25 years, so it's been a little bit of a, of a different experience. Um, but it just clips onto that abutment nice and easy here, um, and you get kind of used to just popping it on. It's not hard to pop on once you get used to it. And um, it looks even smaller when it's on my gigantic, um, you know, large brained, uh, large brain caged uh, head here. Um, and so it's, it's quite, could be quite in inconspicuous. I have long hair. If I let the hair down, you can't see it at all. So if you're, if you're a woman or you're a man with long hair, then it's, um, it can be quite inconspicuous. Now, here's some things that I want to let you know about it. Um, I talked about the surgery on another video, but the surgery, uh, although it's an outpatient procedure, prepare to feel nauseous. Cranial surgery doesn't always feel that good. And I had drainage out of my ear for unknown reasons, probably just because of the vibration in the skull, my body reacted to it or something. Um, so I actually had like a mild ear infection after I um, 
had this particular surgery. So the surgery is what it is. You do have to wait about three months for everything to heal up nicely and for the bone to fully grow around uh, that titanium implant uh, and for the skin to grow around the abutment so everything is is nice and ready to go. So when you're sending those powerful vibrations into your skull, it's not gonna knock anything loose. So do expect that. Um, I mentioned long hair. So I have long hair, as you guys can probably uh, tell, and I usually wear it down. Um, when you wear it down, yeah, you can't see the hearing aid. However, if the hearing aid is brushing against the microphones, um, it can get uh, kind of distracting and really, really loud. Um, so it's something that you have to be aware of. Um, if you're a woman, you might want to think about, uh, you know, pinning your hair in a certain way so that it's not it's not actively moving around on my on the um, on the hearing aid. But you know, I'm a teacher, so I'm moving around constantly. My hair is just kind of going everywhere. So it can get in a quiet environment. I definitely notice it more than in a loud environment. I spend most of my day in a fairly loud environment, which means that uh, it's not it's not too bad a thing when it happens to be um, in, you know amid the other noise. I don't notice it too much. But in a quiet environment, yeah, I notice my hair moving around a little bit. Now, this thing actually has two programs, and if you see this middle part of it, that's actually a button. And I can press that button and it can alternate between the two programs. And um, one program or the first program, um, I would call it like an omnidirectional mic array. And you guys are not recording engineers, so that may not make a whole lot of sense to you, but um, omnidirectional means all directions. So basically I, I end up with a little bit more than 180 degrees around my head with, with that first setting. Um, and that means I can hear things behind me really, really well. And I can hear things in front of me um, really, really well as well. Um, and the best thing that I can equate it to, and most of you have never done this, is to actually set up a really good array of a couple of good condenser mics. Like I'm talking to you on a Rode NT1, and that's what I tend to use for a lot of acoustic recording. Um, so setting up like a couple of good mic arrays and then putting the headphones on nice and loud so you can't hear anything else that's out there and you just hear the sound of the microphone. It's amazing what you can hear um, when you hook this thing up, and especially if you haven't heard in a while. Um, or if you put those headphones on and you hear a great mic array, like in front of an orchestra, uh, you're gonna hear like the violin players tightening their bows. You can hear like every little detail. So that's what it's like. I can hear details incredibly well on that first program. Honestly, almost too well. It doesn't feel like a natural ear, although it's very, very cool. It doesn't feel like it's now my second ear and I'm actually hearing what I want to hear. I'm hearing things in an omnidirectional sense. And so I can't always tell what direction sounds coming from with that first mode. Um, and when you get into when you get into a noisy environment, like I'm in a very quiet environment, you know, my little my little office or studio. Um, and so I can hear things really, really well. I can like, you know, I can hear like the paper moving. Um, and uh, that's really cool. When I get into a classroom and there's kids talking, it's it gets to be really kind of overwhelming and, and just too noisy. It's it's almost like white noise. So there's a second program on it, and you just press the button again turns on the second program so I just turn on the second program and like my perception of sound changed a little bit it's a little more focused on that second version of it and to me it feels more like a um, a natural ear is the best way I can put it is that it's a little more forward uh, unidirectional array so um, if you're looking at somebody you're gonna have a little bit better time of hearing them with that um, versus hearing all the sound that's going on all around you uh, wherever you happen to be um, so both of those modes are um, pretty effective and pretty interesting. I'm using the second mode um, a little bit more than the first mode um, simply because I operate in a pretty noisy environment pretty much most of my day unless I'm sitting in, in the studio practicing or something like that. Um, it's either I have people talking all the time or there's like some noisy machines or something like that going on. So the focused one tends to be a little bit better and you'll get that done. Um, you'll they'll when they program it there's some um you know you have some audiology experts that'll program it for you and uh can boost certain frequencies if you happen to have um you know a, a significant hearing loss in one particular frequency they can boost that frequency of course i went in with my you know conductive hearing loss profile and, and what i could hear you know conductively and they sort of tuned it from there um and set up both of those programs now also on the device and i guess i'll you know i'll if you hold it down for about two seconds, it'll just turn off, um, which I recommend you do when you're pulling this on and off because if you start pulling it off with it on, it's gonna feedback like crazy. Feedback is something that actually occurs with um, this type of hearing aid. But on the side, there's actually a very, very tiny nubbin 
and um, that tiny little nubbin, and those of you who don't watch my videos regularly, I'm a classical guitarist, that's why the nails are there. Um, the, the tiny little nubbin is actually a very small volume knob, and you can just dial the volume um, up and down to whatever um, whatever comfort level you want for that particular environment. And it's really, really helpful. It's really easy to just kind of kind of dial it up. And if you have two, you can just dial them both up. Um, very, very convenient and really, really useful um, for being able to you know operate in whatever sort of environment um, you happen to be in. So I, I mentioned you do need to, uh, I do recommend you turn this off when you're taking it off and putting it on. Um, you have to kind of go at an angle when you turn it on. This kind of hearing aid is prone to what's called feedback. If you don't know what feedback is, feedback is where you have a sound of um, a speaker. You guys can't see this, but I have monitors. I have big speakers up. Um, a speaker facing into a microphone, and so the microphone is come. The sound of the microphone is coming back out through the speaker, back into the microphone, out the speaker, into the microphone. That creates what's called a feedback loop, and a feedback loop. It has an ever increasing amount of amplitude because each time it goes through the amplification phase, it gets louder and louder until it's very quickly at whatever peak amplitude is available in, in that amplifier. That's why um, feedback, when you know you may hear it in a concert, it goes wee. It's usually a high pitch that starts feeding back through the, the monitors and it's very, very loud and annoying. Well, this kind of hearing aid can get that, and the main way that you get it is if the part of the uh, hearing aid that houses the microphones touches. Um, something that's touching your skull. So if I go to a certain particular angle, and you can actually sometimes hear it. I don't know if I can get you guys to hear the feedback. But if I get this to touch the skin on the back of my neck, and I'm a pretty, like, you know, big dude, and I have a big head, um, I can actually get it to feedback just by touching that part of the skin, and it gets some of the sound of the skull, creates a little feedback loop. And apparently you can hear it. <laughs> uh, I've been told, like, oh, I can hear, you know, by other people, like, I can hear that feedback. I'm like, okay, that's a little weird, but... Maybe you could hear that, maybe not. Um, but it's it's not super loud inside my head. It's a little bit annoying. Um, uh, but that only happens if I'm like doing some kind of like super weird angle with my head. Um, and I could probably get a taller abutment to solve that if I if I felt like it was a real uh, real real problem. But that is something you're gonna have to be aware of is that um, this kind of um, hearing aid is a little more prone to feedback than one where the um, speakers are going straight into your into your ear canal. Um, so. What's my judgment over of the overall, you know, effectiveness of this? It's really, really cool. Um, I am able to hear things out of my right ear for the first time well in about 25 years. So that's pretty, pretty cool. I'm able to understand speech a lot better um, than I did before because I have both ears activated being able to hear what people are saying. And it's also just louder. And I can hear the difference between we and he a lot better. Um, so my perception of speech, I feel like, has already gotten a lot better. But it is going to take some getting used to. The first thing I noticed when I put on the hearing aid is that I felt like it sounded a little bit mechanical. It sounded artificial. Um, didn't sound like my normal ears. And that's because it is mechanical and artificial. And it's not my normal ears. However, I found, um, I got this programmed on Tuesday, and it's um, Thursday night now. So over the last two days, what I've noticed is that I have a lot more moments where I'm not aware that the hearing aid is doing its thing, that it's just more input than I'm getting, and I'm just able to interact in my environment. It feels like another normal ear that's, that's attached to my head, and I'm able to actually hear things. Things are much louder. Um, one of the things that my wife noticed right away, and hopefully it hasn't become like really apparent as this video has gone on, but it may have, is that I talk a lot more quietly, and that's because I can hear myself better. Um, I can hear myself in my environment and through this microphone a lot more clearly uh, than I could um, before because, you know, I can't, couldn't hear anything. Um, I'm also a lot more aware of how significant my hearing loss really is because um, it's not just that I'm not getting any any more input into my right ear. I take it off and I realize my left ear is not so good either. Um, this is something that I kind of had have had kind of hammered into my head over the last couple of years, going to see doctors, and I'm like, you know, the left ear is still good, and they're like, not really. <laughs> it's like your left eardrum is messed up still, but it just it doesn't have a giant gaping hole in it, and you can still hear a little bit out of it outside the tinnitus and stuff. So it's it's. Yeah, it's better than my right ear in that sense, but my my cochlea in my right ear is actually a little bit more intact. Um, 
So it's been good. I have listened to some music with it, for those of you that are interested. Um, and uh, the music can be a little bit um, not what I'm used to. However, I did turn on my stereo and I have a pretty good stereo setup and uh, my son wanted to listen to some Twilight Force so I put on uh, put on one of their records and uh, man it sounded really good it actually sounded that um, uh, their first record I remember I was like oh you know it's not quite as good production quality as their second record well, I put it on today and I was like this sounds really really great I can hear every instrument like super clearly um, and I think it was just the the hearing aid allowing me to get a little bit more input a uh, little bit more data getting in the brain. Um, another thing that I I am dealing with um, that you may not deal with unless you have a unilateral deafness that is like my um, my unilateral hearing loss or my unilateral deafness, um, which is that uh, my neurology is not used to receiving information from that ear. So the nerve bundle coming out of my right ear hasn't been firing a whole lot of information into my brain over the last 25 years. So now um, it is. And I have to, I, I, my brain, my perception, my, um, my neurological system has to adjust to and learn to accept data from that ear, which it's not usually used to doing. And it's really hard to describe how that feels but it's just really disorienting. The first time I put it on, I felt really disoriented by this hearing aid. It felt really weird. I kept turning my head, you know, to what was that? And um, I felt, I, I, it felt kind of lightheaded or, or kind of almost like, I don't know, sleepy in a weird way. It's just really, really disoriented is the best way I can put it. It just felt really weird the first day that I had it on. Today was a lot better. Um, and I think it's just my, me having to get used to hearing things out of that ear that I haven't I haven't heard out of in in almost three decades. Really, I haven't I haven't heard out of that ear since I was a very very small child, like two or three. So it's been thirty years since I've heard anything out of it, and it's going to take some time to adjust to it. And I'm still learning to adjust to it. But like I said, I have these moments where I forget it's there, where it feels like totally integrated into whatever my my senses are, and I can hear things really well. The TV feels really loud all of a sudden. Um, music feels louder. I look over at my dial on my truck and usually that dial's like all the way over and it's like just a little bit over and I'm like, I remember this record feeling pretty quiet when I got it and right now I don't want to turn it up any louder than that because I'm afraid it'll, it, it, it won't sound as good um, or it'll hurt my ears or something like that. It just felt very loud. So that's one of the things I'm perceiving things a lot louder and so it's right away it's really, really effective. I'm very, very glad um, I had it done. For anyone that is interested, this is one little point that I found out is that this hearing aid does auto attenuate. And here's what that means is that there, um, whatever um, volume level you have it set at, um, there's a there's a max amplitude. There's like a max output um, and max compression that they do. And beyond that, the, the sound is just compressed and leveled off. Um, so it's not gonna amplify a, a gunshot um, beyond a certain amount of, of decibel input into your skull, um, which means that it's going to be safe, right? And it also means that if I step into a loud environment like a band, which, you know, I'm a band director, um, that band can be really loud and it's not like, it's not blasting my ears off. And when the band stops playing, you know, it kind of releases that, um, that compression gate and I can hear speech a little bit. So it's been really, really effective for my environment. Um, generally, I recommend it. This one is the Oticon Ponto uh, Plus Power. Um, and uh, they have a Ponto 3 now, so uh, that one's probably gonna be even better than the one that I have, um, and I I really like the one that I have. I think it does a, a great, great job. Uh, Cochlear also makes a bone-anchored hearing aid, and I don't have their bone-anchored hearing aid, so I can't really compare, but this one sounds really, really good, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm glad my wife pushed me to do it. If you guys don't know, my wife is a speech pathologist, and she's, um, you know, uh, she's familiar with hearing loss and, and all the technology that goes with it. So she's the one who really pushed me um, to actually get this thing done. And I'm very, very glad I had it done. And I'm looking forward to getting to use it in a musical capacity and not just um, speech. But I got to say, like being able to hear speech with a, a feeling of much increased accuracy, that is, is really, really valuable. And I can't tell you quite how it feels to have this trajectory where you're looking at having to give up, you know, the career that you've had for a long time because you can't hear anything anymore, 
um, and being able to have somebody say like, no, you know, that can be fixed. And to have that uh, that thing that you buried kind of be resurrected and, and be able to do it. Um, and so the last couple months I've actually, um, you know, actually gone back and composed music, which is something that I haven't done in a number of years since I really started to go deaf. Um, so you guys can check that out down below. Of course, I'll, I'll have links. And um, don't forget to read my book if you're interested in that. Let's see if I have a copy. Here it is. Uh, I have other books too, but uh, you can get this one in paperback. Muramasa Blood Drinker. Quite proud of it. Um, I appreciate you joining me on this journey. Thank you for all the well wishes. And um, perhaps if you become a cyborg, you can let me know how it's working out for you as well. And um, I hope you guys have a great, great day. Don't forget to visit my websites, dvspress.com, davidvstewart.com. And uh, let me know what you want to see and what you want to hear in the comments down below. And let me know how it's all working out for you. And I'm happy, um, I'm happy to provide you whatever information uh, might be relevant for you. Have a good one.